Hi there, how are you? This is going to be a fantastic SEO video. This is probably going to be on the long side, but I'm going to cover everything you need to know about SEO. I'm going to, go, I'm going to cover a little bit of history, a little bit of the background so that even beginners can sort of follow along, but then I'm going to get into really good tactics for how you can rank almost just about any page in top 10 of Google, how you can dominate Google, and really some really advanced stuff, right? So stick around. It, the video is going to be on the long side, but that's because it's going to be packed, jam-packed with great great stuff so let's get started so why SEO why uh, well uh, there's a good reason because the the strength of it and this is not going away this is this is always has been the case and will be the case that when people type something into Google they are telling you exactly what they want at exactly the time that they need it and that's incredibly powerful because if you think about maybe your own shopping habits when was the last time you bought something maybe you bought a piece of clothing, right? Well, if somebody said, was waving on the street and was saying, hey, I got this clothing. Well, probably at that moment, you didn't need that thing, right? So the combination of the, just the right timing with just the right person's intent um, is very powerful because that person is ready to, you know, if it's a product, they're ready to buy. If it's content, they're ready, they are ready to consume that content. So people who come, who come from SEO generally convert into customers, um, into something lucrative, into some transactions uh, far higher than maybe people browsing on Facebook or maybe other social media. You know, maybe there are exceptions to the rule, but in general, that's why SEO is so coveted. Another reason SEO is so coveted is that if your page ranks in Google, let's say, um, as long as it ranks, maybe it ranks this whole year, maybe two years, maybe five years, maybe your whole life. Well, as long as it ranks, it will continue to bring your clients. And after you build that page, once it ranks, you don't really have to do anything, right? So it's very kind of passive. Whereas if you were advertising on social media, you always have to be advertising like, hey, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, click my link. And as soon as you stop promoting, then it's sort of like the traffic sort of stops, you know? You know, in a large way. Of course, again, you know, the web is complex and there are exceptions to the rule, but generally that's how it is. So uh, this is why SEO is powerful. Get great clients for a long time, right? So that's, that's exactly what you want. And let me t tell a little bit about the history of it and how we've come. You know, we've come kind of quite far. You know, SEO has been around for 20 years now. In the beginning, nobody kind of got it, right? It's maybe people who were building search understood it, but people Actually, most people who are great SEOs now, they kind of discovered SEO, and this was also true for me, uh, by simply whenever they put in their first website and they, they installed Google Analytics, they started noticing immediately that people were coming to their site by searching for weird terms, you know, just like maybe they wrote an article about XYZ and people started searching for that topic and they were coming to that site. And some people were like, wow, I can actually get traffic so easily. And then the light bulb goes off in their head and then they become SEO machines and they realize, well, if I just didn't even focus on it, what if I really focus on it and really maybe I can grow a whole business out of it? And so actually many, many people did precisely that and grew big businesses out of just SEO. And SEO is, if you can get it to work for you, it's fantastic. Um, if you can really get it to work for you, there is no better marketing strategy. Um, as maybe really, really high-end publicity, maybe really, really, really incredibly smart social media, but pound for pound, if you can get a CEO to work, you can get great, great um, clients and build a business. So that's what many people did. And of course, since many people did that, many more people wanted to do that. So there kind of came a flood of people who were doing SEO and then SEO started to become competitive and then people started to try to compete each other and this is where, you know, in the beginning they could play by the rules and then once it became competitive people had to start to bend the rules. So there became this concept of white hat, which means like you're playing by the rules, gray hat, you're kind of bending the rules a little bit and black hat where you're really bending the rules and it's really unethical and generally uh, frowned upon. Right? But as long as you can get your black hat stuff to work, your black hat strategies to work, 
um, you know, people might say you are ethical, but here you are building a business, right? So, uh, you know, who's to judge um, other than, you know, maybe being careful of Google penalties? I mean, we'll get into that in a second. But anyway, um, now I think people take generally white hat, gray hat, black hat with a kind of a grain of salt. I mean, we've all sort of had to bend the rules if we really cared and were creative about growing our business. So anyway, uh, so there was a proliferation of people doing SEO. And one of the things about SEO, uh, one of the really, um, and actually one of the things that really made Google stand out, right? Why, why Google wasn't the first search engine, so why were they the best? Well, they were the best because their search engine, and, and this is like late 90s, uh, had this, they had this revolutionary approach to search where they actually bra crawled, they had, they had a computer that crawled the entire web and looked at which sites were linking to which other sites. So a link is almost like a vote, right? So if, you're, if one site gets linked to a lot, well, that possibly means that it's an authoritative source. A lot of people are linking to it, maybe for a reference, or, you know, it's, as opposed to if a site gets no links, then it's kind of like a new site, or maybe the owner doesn't care about it a lot. So, so you can, Google was able to tell, like, links are kind of votes of quality, right? Because you wouldn't link to bad sites, you would link to good sites, right? As a, maybe a good resource, some, you know, a good content, a good product, he would link to those things. And that's what made Google so good, right? They, they, were, they realized the links were kind of like votes, and if you took the links in mass, you can really tell which sites are the best and not. And people quickly caught on to it, and they started building links unnaturally, right? So maybe paying people or, or uh, doing anything else, you know, basically, you know, unnatural link building, right? Um, as long as it was like under Google radar and Google didn't detect it. Uh, and people, that works for a long time, many years. And of course, now it doesn't work so simply. Now what you've got to do is really, you, the links are still important. They're still a very big part of uh, making your website and individual pages rank in Google. But now it's not the only factor. Now it's a little less important. It's still important, but now the, the links are like link building is more complicated because now the links have to come th from other authoritative sites and relevant sites, right? So, you know, you don't want to have a link from, you know, it's better to have one link from like CNN or TechCrunch or some other big reputable website as opposed to 10,000 links that are like from spam123.com, right? So, um, so links were and still are a huge part of um, Google's algorithm. But, but I, I'll, I'll get into link building in a second. Um, I just wanted to explain how the history of search sort of evolved and what, ha what ended up happening through time and really where we are now, right? Now we are, in a, you know, search has evolved, it's complex and um, anything that you manipulate, you better believe it, you know, whether it's a link, whether it's something else, you better believe that Google knows what you're up to because they're, they have the, some of the smartest people working for over a decade on algorithm fraud and detection and things like that, so you're not going to outsmart them. Okay, so uh, we've covered why it's so powerful, why you want it. Now, let's kind of get back to the basics, right? Um, there's two parts of SEO. The stuff you do on your page, it's called the on-page SEO, it's actually simpler to execute. Uh, and then there is off-page SEO, that's kind of like the link building and other, and other strategies. So let's talk about these, right? What really goes into on-page SEO, and this is easier for you to do because you don't have to ask anyone for permission, because it's your website, you can do anything you want to it, right? Um, so it's basically for your entire website and your individual pages, it's very important that you choose the right keywords, right? Because what are people going to search? People are going to search, you know, different keywords and they, they search the keywords and they come to that page, right? If your page is about that topic, right? 
So let's say that you wanted to rank for shoes, right? It's a very, very lucrative search, right? Or like uh, sneakers, Nike sneakers. Very, very lucrative search because obviously a lot of people search that and then a lot of commerce happens. So what, what do you have to do? You have to make a page about Nike sneakers, okay? I mean, you have to make a pretty incredible page to, to have a chance to rank in top 10 of Google because it's such a competitive term. And I'll get into that in a little bit. And I'm gonna use this Nike sneakers as an example for, every, for everything, well, for, for whenever I talk about any topic, I'll use this Nike sneakers search example because it's such a difficult search and um, it's a nearly impossible search term to rank for. Um, but you'll see how it's, if it is possible, you'll see how in this video and I'll go through what you can do um, th throughout. So anyway, so basically we've got the keywords, right? Nike shoes. But we should not stop there, right? Keywords can be long tail and short tail, meaning Nike shoes, and pay attention, this is important. Nike shoes is a, considered a short tail term, right? It's a very short term. Um, it's a little bit of a general term. Is what kind of Nike shoes? Sneakers, for tennis, for running, for basketball, um, right? It's, it's a little bit not specific. So, uh, the buyer, by the way, maybe that doesn't know exactly what they want, so they're not exactly a great buyer because they, they're not ready to buy. Like if the buyer search for something, red, Nike, sneakers, basketball shoes, size 12, Jordans, a year 2015, okay, that model, that person knows exactly what they want, right? So all you have to do is just have that on your side, serve up that page and sell it, right? Because that's the product exactly they wanted, right? And that's a long tail keyword. Okay, see how Nike keywords is a short tail keyword? And the blah, 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 Nike 2015, Jordan, Air Jordans, basketball, that's a long tail keyword. But guess what? People who search, people rarely search for, you know, not rarely, but you would think that people search intelligently, like and grammatically correctly, like Nike shoes or Nike sneakers or whatever. But a lot of people, they search for like weird convoluted combinations of words. So here's the first real insight, okay? You always want to have a page that targets a short tail term, just in case, but targets also many, 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 many different combinations of long tail keywords, just like I described, right? Blue, red, green, okay, colors, sizes, right? Um, year 2015, so maybe Air Jordans, maybe another basketball player, right? So maybe you want to have a big you know, all-star, whatever, whatever the relevant keywords are for that term, I mean, um, you want to kind of like have a bigger page so that you're going to have enough keywords in there, enough words on your page so that Google can sort of, maybe you're not going to rank immediately for Nike shoes, but you actually very well may rank for a lot of the longer tail keywords. And if you do that, people will start coming to your site and if people are getting a good experience, Google will start to rank you higher and higher for more competitive terms, right? So a little trickle of traffic will actually go a long way um, to eventually getting your site or page to rank for more complex terms, right? So this is insight number one that's really important to keep in mind as we go forward, okay? Now, just keywords are fine if, you and you can rank a page or website, if you're not in a competitive niche, you can rank a page or website easily with just on-page SEO if you're not in a competitive niche. Now, if you're in a competitive niche like shoes, like Nike shoes, you want to, you need to do more. Okay? So you need to do on-page, off-page SEO. And by the way, I'll, and I'll talk more about on-page SEO later. I just want to touch on um, the important elements of on-page SEO are, like I said, you want to build a good page. There are two important meta tags that you want to include in every page. The title meta tag and the description meta tag. These are things people do not see on your page. These are things that but Google takes into account. They're meta tags. They're also things that appear in your blurb. You know, like when people search and they see your title and a little bit of a description. That the title of the title tag and the description is the description tag. You want to make it keyword rich and attractive, attractive for people to 
see and click on you when they search you in Google and uh, keyword rich so that Google can take those keywords into consideration because Google weighs those keywords that are in your title description tags quite heavily. Okay? You also want to have different kinds of media on your page. Different kinds of media can be obviously text, links to your other pages, links to external pages, photos, videos embedded, PowerPoints embedded, audio embedded, right? Different rich, rich media and different kinds of media make your page look richer to Google, make your page look richer to visitors. And because of that, the more of these you can get, these are quality signals that will help you rank in Google, okay? Also will help people like your page because a lot of modern SEO is about how are people using your site? Are they staying around or are they leaving? And if you give them a great page, they'll stick around and Google will, Google will see that. Um, they'll be able to monitor that and they'll rank your page higher. So it's all important, right? So now we've got the on-page SEO, SEO covered, on-site, right? Now what you want to do, let's talk about off-page SEO. Before, um, off-page SEO, like I mentioned, was all about building links. And you can build even uh, not great links and you'll still rank very highly. But now, uh, you've got to be a lot smarter. So it's not just about links. Links are still important, right? Links from other sites that are relevant and you know, in, in content and that are reputable. But also, you want to be able to have your pages shared on social media. You can share it and get people to reshare it. And you can, you know, obviously it's important to have the social sharing buttons on your website, on your page, so that people who come to the page will share your content, and so Google will see that, and the more people come, the more they will share, and it creates this golden cycle where the more people come, the more people share, and then you get all this extra social sharing, and social sharing now is a really big um, factor for SEO. And the four sites, the four social sites that are very important for, for, for SEO are Facebook, Twitter, um, Google Plus, and uh, Pinterest. Those are the four major uh, websites, social websites for SEO. You want to get people to share your products uh, or share your pages on those. Those are very important. Um, so there's social sharing, there's links, right? That's your off-page SEO. There's also customer behavior, right? Like I mentioned, like for example, you know, search has to do with intent, right? So think about it. If a person types Nike shoes, and let's say you're on the fifth page, okay, of Google search results, that means you're like number 15. Almost nobody goes that far. Um, but let's say people page, you know, they didn't find something they liked on the first page, or the second page, and the third page, and the fourth page, and they found you on the fifth page, and wow, like, they liked your page more than the other pages, right? And let's say a lot of people have that experience, or at least some. Well, we will think like, wow, people are really liking this page that's buried deep in our search, let's rank it higher. And then more people will start to find you from that search. And the more people like your page, right? The more they'll stay on it, they'll give off like positive usability signals. And before you know it, Google will say, wow, this is the coolest page for this search we should really rank this highest, right? Um, so you wanna have the coolest and best and most informative and you know just most helpful page on a topic, right? This is probably the strongest um, uh, rank, SEO ranking factor and coincidentally, you know, it's also a large, large part of that is on page SEO, not just the off page SEO stuff. So, okay, um, so that's intent. Um, you know, so those are the three major things: uh, links, social sharing, intent, and really it's four because it's intent and also it's customer behavior, right? How are they behaving on your site? Are they staying a lot? Are they staying? Stick, are they sticking around longer? Are they browsing a lot of pages, or are they clicking back? You know, the back button. If they click the back button after they came to your site, that's not very good, right? That's not a good sign. Um, it's better sign if they stay on your site for a while, they, they search, they browse other uh, pages, things like that. That's a great sign. That's what you want people to do. 
and Google will see that and rank you higher. So those four factors, they will go a very long way. And notice that two of those factors are limitless. Number of links, number of social, amount of social sharing. Those two things. And here's how you can rank almost any page. Okay? Just keep on building links and sharing socially a page that you want to share. Okay? Um, boost those social signals, like, and boost that, um, the, the quality signal, right? So build, build good links, link, 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 link. Share, 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 share on social media. Get other people to share, share, share. And before you know it, you'll be pretty high in search results, even for very, very, very competitive searches. Because it's limitless, right? So, I mean, just keep on uh, pressing the gas. Links, links, links. Um, share, 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 right? And of course, the, the, the trick there is the page really has to be a lucrative page for your business, right? Because you cannot, have, you don't have enough time or resources to do that for every page. But certainly, you can do that for uh, the very lucrative pages of your business, the ones that really make, the ones that really bring the right kind of customers, meaning the searches, the intents that really people search for that are prime, like really great customers for your potential. So. Those are probably not many pages, so you can really focus on them and get traffic and rank them. Right? So that's how you use the uh, on-page SEO and off-page SEO to really rank your site like really highly. I want to also give you a few tips of how to build links because it's not immediately apparent how to build links. Right? Um, the simplest and most brute force way. First of all, you know, ask your okay, even this is this is even the pre-official uh, strategy, right? You have any friends who have websites? It doesn't bother, it doesn't hurt to ask them to maybe link to you. Okay, probably a few of them will, and probably that won't really help you, but it's a good start. Now, here's a brute force way that a brute force strategy that anybody can do. Okay, you write an email like, "Hello, I'm working on the site. I'm new. Uh, I'm really passionate about my business. Da 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 da. da. Can you please?" Um, maybe give me a shout out on your blog or your website and because I'm just beginning to grow. And you send that to hundreds of bloggers or website owners in your niche. Like you really have, you literally have to go side by side um, and find the bloggers in your niche and um, contact them. This is, gonna be a, this is gonna take a lot of time. This is something you can outsource. Right? You can hire someone to do this as long as you teach them how to do it correctly. So you do that. And you'll get a small conversion rate. Few people will po reply positively. Um, what will influence that is the quality of your site. If your site is any good, you'll get a far higher chance uh, that, that they will, people will link to you. And of course, you know, if, if your email is, is, is effective, that will also positively in increase how people, uh, you know, if they will link to you. Uh, give or take, you're going to get a 5% success rate. So you have an email hundreds of people, right? But if you email hundreds of people, um, it's great because you'll get a bunch of links ultimately and they will help you rank quite a bit. That's the br brute force way, right? This is a no-brainer strategy. It can work for anyone. Now, let's talk about something a little bit smarter. Um, how about a very complicated uh, professional strategy. What you want to do is get publicity. You can get publicity, you can get coverage um, you know, in blogs, in podcasts, in uh, news, whatever. You, know, you can do press releases, right? As long as you get some kind of publicity on media channels, even podcasts, they all have dedicated websites. And they'll link to you, right? That publicity, people will start to link to you. And it, it's publications that are in your industry, so it's relevant. And they're reputable. They're really reputable sites usually. So one of those links is worth a lot, right? Because all the links, their worth is all different uh, in terms of how positively, positively they affect your site. So the, the publicity is a great, great strategy. You have to become good at publicity. I mean, that's a skill in itself. But if you can get there, um, you'll get all the links you will ever need and want. There is 
basically another strategy is that you, you, can, you should always be building a um, professional network, right? So that you can just ask for favor, just like you might ask friends, but your friends probably don't have websites and, re and relevant niches. But the people who will have websites in relevant niches are people who um, do business in your field. So you want to network with other professionals in your field, network with them well, help them, so that when you need a link, maybe you can just ask them. Uh, and you know, if, if they're good connections, that they'll happy, they'll be uh, sometimes happy to help you because they know that you will also help them at some point in the future. Okay, so that's how you build links. I mean, uh, I have, by the way, you know, I have a lot on link building and things like that and other marketing strategies that go into more detail in my online, in my big online marketing course. Um, you know, uh, it covers a lot. Like it has 11 hours of content and of tutorials and stuff like that. So if there's anything, any topic that you know, I'm trying to cover a lot here, but obviously I'm not going to be able to cover everything. So if there's something that you're still wondering or anything, I'll have links in the description of this video for both. If you need hands-on help, how you can contact me, and and I'll have a link to my big uh, marketing strategy video. Sorry, marketing strategy course, um, which really like will cover e everything: uh, in-depth SEO, in-depth social media, many offline marketing, many, many, many strategies. So you'll be like. Uh, by the time you're done with it, if you're not sick of me talking, then, then you'll be like really good at marketing, right? Um, you know. Anyway, so that's kind of how I wanna how I wanted to kind of uh, briefly talk about how to build links, and so I think these strategies are pretty simple. There are a ton of like strategies. I mean, you can build infographics. Um, there, there's this. You know, you can create link bait. I mean, these are these are you know uh, slightly more advanced strategies for this video. I mean. And they may or may not work. I know that publicity works. I know I know that strategy about you know the brute force strategy. The brute force strategy that works. So I just basically gave you strategies that work. Um, sometimes you know the you know other strategies they may or may not work depending on your business. Anyway, let's move on. So I want to talk about how to build a good page for SEO. I've already alluded to a lot of the elements, right? Title. Uh, keyword rich but not overly spammy um, title description meta tags then you want to have like three or four h2 tags one h1 tag all with relevant keywords but not stuffing keywords not not too many keywords you know because that will, will look spammy to Google then you want to have you know the, the longer the content and it has to be original content you can just copy it from somewhere so the longer the content uh, the better right so 500 words is okay, 1,000 words is great, 2,000 words is freaking fantastic, right? Um, and it's basically going to tell Google, like, you put a lot of work into this page. You don't want to, like, write filler words like, and, yes, but, it's, you want to have actually good content worth 2,000 words, right? But if you do that, and you add rich media, maybe videos, maybe photos, this is a really good candidate page. Um, to rank in Google and I want to talk about this concept of cornerstone pages like this video because it attempts to cover SEO in such a holistic way and really deliver a lot of value right from the very big to beginners to some advanced people this is actually considered a cornerstone video a cornerstone piece of content what that means is it's kind of like a definitive video for a topic or a definitive piece of content for a topic, right? It, it covers everything, which means that it should really rank for that major term, right? Uh, because it covers everything. It's so holistic. Like peop m the most people will get really great benefit from it because it just covers so much. And that's called, that strategy is called cornerstone content. Incidentally, those cornerstone content pieces are long. Like this video is long, a blog post, it's equivalent would be very long as well and Google likes that they do like that because it, it looks like you know people spend more time on it uh, people get more benefit out of it uh, there's a lot that's good about these so keep in mind about you know if you want to tackle big topics like Nike shoes you better have a great great page almost maybe a cornerstone page for Nike shoes right so that 
it really has potential. It really does belong in the ranking of the top 10, you know, for uh, Google search results for that competitive term. Now, you already understand how to make everything page your pages rank, um, you know, basically on page SEO with the right keywords, links, social sharing, um, the users have to behave the right way to signal quality to Google. But um, still, Google is, the Google, Google search itself is probably in the history of mankind is the single most competitive and brutal marketing strategies there is, right? Because everyone who's got a website is competing with you. There's millions of these, millions and millions, right? You're competing against, you're competing against the entire world. You're competing against billion and million dollar companies. I mean, it's hard. It's really hard. So what do you do? What do you do, right? I'll tell you what I do. I actually try to not compete in Google. And I'll give you a good example. Because we've been, we've been talking about search, like searches, for example, Google. Like we've, we've been using it synonymously. Search and Google, you know, that's the only example we've been working on. But that's incorrect, right? That, that has been incorrect because there's other search engines. You might think, he's talking about Bing, he's talking about Yahoo. No, I'm not. I'm actually talking about Amazon.com. How do people find things, right? They search, okay? Yelp.com. How do, how do people find Amazon? How do, you know, on Amazon, they find books and products. Local services. How do they find local services? They search sometimes Google, but sometimes Yelp. Okay. Apps. How do people find apps? Most app discovery happens through search. Right. Second is social recommendations. Uh, podcast. How do people find podcasts? Well, a lot of times they search in the podcast. They search, you know, to find relevant podcasts for relevant topics. On YouTube, how do people find YouTube videos? Well, a lot of the discovery is search, right? So you can see that almost any site out there, almost any site, um, has search built in, and all of these sites are huge. If you can get traffic from them. That's huge, right? You're gonna get huge amount of traffic. So, I'll tell you what I did. Um, when I first was building my business, my business was to help entrepreneurs. It was a business planning mobile app. That's the thing, first thing I made. Um, I made it on Android, and actually, I ended up being able to rank that, page, that app for the word business, just the word business, which is the single most competitive term in the business niche. Um, and I was able to rank that, not right away, but you know, it took me a while, but I was number one for a long time. I was number one for business plan. This is on the Android app, app store, right? I was on number one for marketing, for business plan, things like that, right? For the word business. Of course I got a lot of downloads, right? I, 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 now I think there are over 600,000 downloads to, altogether on my Android apps. But, um, to compare that, I, I wouldn't have never, I would have never even gotten even close to that kind of volume had I only targeted Google, right? Same thing with YouTube. I mean, I have at the time of this recording maybe over a third of a million views. It's not the biggest channel in the world, but hopefully it will grow exponentially from today on. But you know, still I get a very nice amount of traffic every day. It is growing, uh, not exponentially, but very rapidly still. Um, and a lot of the traffic comes from search, right? So you see that um, I'm leveraging other platforms. I, actually, I also sell online courses, right? On a site called Udemy. A lot of the people find me organically from Udemy by just searching, you know, for the relevant courses, right? So as you can see, I actually target, um, you know, I, I actually focus far less on Google SEO for, for my own business because I get a far higher return on my investment by um, targeting other big platforms, big sites. Especially if your products are on it, right? Like I have Amazon, I have my books on Amazon. Well, my products are on there. That search is really important for me because as soon as people find me there, they find products that they can buy, right? Um, same with the online courses, right? Uh, so anyway, so I want you guys to think about how you can maybe leverage other platforms to 
start building your business because every other search engine, any other search engine, is easier to rank for whatever keywords you want than Google. Google is the hardest thing there is, right? So, so don't just, many first time marketers, they, they think Google, 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 and then right away they're, begin, they're newbies who are competing against billion dollar companies. I mean, who do you think is gonna win, right? A newbie or a billion dollar company who has a team of professionals with experience competing for SEO with this newbie, right? I mean, it's, it's no contest. I mean, it's like David against Goliath. Except Goliath wins. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's what you do, right? And here's the brilliant thing about the strategy of, of using uh, these big platforms, right? Well, even if your products on them are basically on those sites, essentially that URL, the page where your product is, that page is kind of your page, right? Because even though it's on their site, let's say it's on Amazon, well, it, but it's my product on there, right? So I want people to go there. Um, and what happens is uh, I can influence SEO of Google, right? You, you can, you can influence Google SEO by leveraging these authoritative sites because the more authoritative a site is, the more likely it will rank. Right? It's something I actually forgot to mention in, earlier in the video is that one of the um, things that really will help your pages rank is the overall authority of your uh, website. And that's measured by the, the total links and other signals that um, Google sort of picks up, right? that Google finds. So, you know, if, you're, if, if I'm on my blog, my blog is just a blog, right? I mean, it's fine but it's just a blog, but it's nowhere near Amazon, right? Amazon is one of the most authoritative websites in the world. So my, my product listing on Amazon will naturally have a lot more sort of like authority, right? The URLs which list my mobile apps, they have a lot of authority. In fact, if you like list if a lot of searches that people do on Google for mobile app tools or things like that, and the apps, the URLs from my mobile apps come up, right? So. I actually really like the strategy of getting your listings on other authoritative sites to rank in Google. And this way you can dominate the top 10. Not just having one um, thing, one page rank in Google, but having multiple um, different pages rank in Google. So for example, let's say that I wanted to, uh, let's say for just as a, for example, I wanted to rank for Nike shoes, right? So what do you do? You list your shoe, you know, you make your listing, let's say you, make, you can make your listing on Amazon as a reseller, right? Okay, that's one. You make your own web page on your site, that's two. You can make a YouTube video with a review of the shoes, that's three. Because um, YouTube videos sometimes also show up in Google, right? So that's three. Uh, then you can uh, maybe I don't know, make a, just, you wouldn't do this, but let's say you wanted to make an online course about, or write a book about Nike shoes, right? Well, the book listing is number four, and the course is number five, right? So let's say you have five items, and you, and you can make a PowerPoint, bunch of slides, and have that rank online, so six, that would be six. So you can, like, there's no limit, right? You can create a bunch of content, and how do you rank that content? How do you make that content rank in Google? Well, we've covered it, right? Because You've got all the content, so it's got the keywords, it's all on authoritative websites, you know, and your site. You're gonna link, you're gonna build links from outside your company, your, outside your site, from other sites into all of these pages, right? You're gonna build and you're gonna share on social media all of these pages. So that to the point of, um, these are gonna start to rank in Google, okay? And if you do that enough, um, or you will get you, all of these pages to rank in Google's uh, Nike shoes search, and you will make a ton of money, a ton, because it's such an incredibly, it was a very difficult search term, but it's an incredibly lucrative search term, and because you're gonna be ranking there with multiple listings, right? One listing can be your web page, one listing can be the URL from the Amazon, one listing can be the YouTube video which sells, which you know, kind of sells your 
product, whatever. So you can have multiple listings for this very lucrative term and really just build a business from that one page. You can drive thousands, and if not tens of thousands of uh, dollars in revenue per month and just that's all, right? Um, so of course it's very, very, very hard for that term, but for any lesser terms, you can certainly do it. So um, that's kind of how I wanted to you know, structure this, this SEO video. I mean, you understand now how you can make any page rank. Um, but if you want to, um, you know, I'll leave you with some resources. I have a full course on this, which is like $500, but, um, and the course covers like a ton of material, but I'll link to the course with a really steep discount coupon so that it's an online course, it's full of video, really insightful stuff. I try to really pack a lot of insight, SEO, social media, a lot of stuff. I'll, I'll have that in the description of the video. And that course will just teach you how to become a really great marketer. I mean, if you thought this was insightful, uh, you'll be blown away because that course it has 11 hours of content. 11 hours of content on all sorts of different issues. If you can sit through it, you'll be a fantastic marketer when you're done. Now, uh, if you want my help, uh, I'll also leave my email. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, I love to help people for free, but I can't help everyone for free because I get so many requests. So it would be, a, you know, it would be kind of a for hire for as a consultant. Um, I can certainly make a marketing strategy for you, your unique business, a marketing strategy that will work really well. Um, I can do that for you. Just email me, and I'll have my email in the description of the video. And by the way, if you like this video, I always appreciate a thumbs up. I always like to hear from you. So. If you want to comment, leave me a comment, tell me what you thought of the video. I love hearing from people and I try to re respond to 100% of the comments that I see. If you have questions, if you have comments, if I missed anything, if you're still confused about something, ask me a question in the comments or, or just comment to me in the comments. I see all the comments, I'll, I'll reply. And uh, also, you know, keep in touch with me by subscribing to this YouTube channel. I think somewhere here is a button to subscribe, so they subscribe, and you'll get alerts of my other videos. And I try to make them really, really insightful. Um, I publish a new video on this channel every day. Um, I don't know how I'll, how long I'll be able to, to sustain that, but guess what? There's about seven or 800 videos already. So I've been a, quite able to sustain that for a while. So um, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and uh, most importantly, I hope you get your page to rank in Google.